Well, what's going on YouTube? This is a unboxing and a test of the 400 watt solar panel. All Powers does have a 600 watt panel, but unfortunately today we only have the 400 watt test, but you know, hey, 400 watts is better than no 100 watts. <laughs> so I kind of cheated a little bit because both of these things are a little bit heavy and I wanted to carry them all in one go. So <laughs> kind of worked out pretty well, but let's unbox this solar panel connected to the All Powers R1500 Lite and see how much sun we can get. We do live in the Midwest and that's the sun that we have. It's currently about two-ish p.m. in the day. So let's get this thing unboxed. All right, my hair's a little bit wild because I kind of just woke up, but I haven't been feeling well the last few days and have slept in pretty late today. <laughs> so forgive the hair or don't, <laughs> but let's get into this thing. Again, this was a review unit. I did not pay for this. This was sent to me for free, but I'm not being paid to make this video and they're not watching this video. So these are my thoughts. If it doesn't collect 400 watts, which most of them do not collect exactly what they say, we'll see what it can do. And plus also I live again in the Midwest, so I don't have the best sun in the first place. So there's that too. You know, some much sunnier places are gonna get way more power. Just like I'm into the Aptera, A-P-T-E-R-A, -E is a solar powered car. And it basically tells you like where you live and where you live determines how much solar you're gonna get most of the time. And yeah, so I'm not gonna get as much sun as someone like in California is gonna get, but this is the box inside the box. So pretty simple on that side. Down there, it's gonna give you some information regarding the product and the like specifications for what all it can do. So all powers, solar panel, AP, SP, 037, and yeah. All right, let's crack her open some more. All right. So that's pretty simple. Doesn't appear to be anything else in this box. So there's the solar panel. All right, so how to use? Place in the sun, connect the device. Total power, 400 watts. Open circuit voltage, 36.5 volts. That's the number you wanna pay attention to. That's the most important number of anything you need here today. If your power station or your device cannot accept 36.5 volts or more, you don't need this, you can't get this. Get something different. Now, most of my power stations these days can support up to 60 volts. And this all power can support way more than 60 volts. It's like 90 something volts. So technically you could get two of these, put them in series and get, you know, double that 36.5 plus 36.5. And you would still be under the 90 something volts that the R1500 light supports. So then you'd have 800 watts worth of solar panel and you might get, you know, six, 700 watts worth of sun. The maximum power voltage is 30.5 and the maximum power current is 13.11 amps. If the amps are more than what your device can take, that's not a big deal. It's only gonna bring in what it can bring in. So uh, let's take a look at the other side of it. And yeah, pretty simple. Just got the Velcro stand to prop it up. And then we have some things here that we're gonna disconnect. It's a little bit heavy, but you know, it's 400 watts and 400 watt panels aren't light. So <laughs> let's see, what is in this little thing? All right, so we get MC4 to XT60 and we get MC4 to looks like 5521. Well, it looks like to me, it's definitely not 7090 or Jackery's plug, which is like the 8080, I think. So and then we have user manual for everything. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight little hooks. So you can attach this to something. So that's very interesting. Oh, oh, oh. No, 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 no. There is a 7090 in here. So it's gonna put it from 5521 to 7090. Okay, okay. So right there is the little adapter. And then right here is the 5521. And that's what I believe. I'm gonna use the XT60, that's the most common for me. And oh yeah, is the connector in there too? I didn't even see that. No, this is, oh yes it is, yes it is, yes it is. So right there, here it is, boom. 
dropping all my stuff. All right, and we can zip this up now and just leave this little part hanging out. Let's go ahead and do it on the side. And then we're gonna untwist this little zip tie here. And it only connects one way. It's when you're doing series in parallel that it gets a little tricky and you gotta know what you're doing. But that requires two panels, so. All right, that's in there. That's a really tight connection. It's gonna be hard to get off once you put it in, I think, maybe. Yeah, you're gonna need a little tool to get it out or not necessarily a tool, but something sharp to put in there and separate them. But I only use XC60, so it's perfectly fine for me. All right, let's set this bad boy up. So first time I'm doing this, I've never even seen this before. So I'm not sure, and I'm sort of mooning everybody here. How is this gonna work? Hey, let's get these legs all on Velcroed. It's very big, so. All right, so there's the panel. We've got it facing the sun as best as I think we can get it facing the sun. And there's our XT90 or XT60. <laughs> Why do I keep saying 90? And then there's what it looks like on the back side of it. So you do have some levels of adjustment here with how far you push the legs in or how far out you pull them. All right, so pop open the panel. This is exciting. First moment here, first opportunity. So connect this up to the power station. I did drain the power station down to, yep, 10%. Okay, so not too shabby. Now let's open the app and see if we've got all the right like settings, like fast mode. Okay, 300 watts there. Okay, so all powers. It freaking signs you out. I don't know why. Okay, so Bluetooth device. We need to turn on the pairing. All right, so it found the unit. And I do believe it is in fast. Yep, okay, so it's in fast mode and yeah. Now you can see on the app that we've got 300. Oh, yep. Okay, so we got 302 watts. So I'm actually impressed. I'll take 300 watts of 400 watts. And that's why when I was communicating with all powers, why I really wanted the 600. Because the 600 would easily be able to provide, you know, four to 500 watts. Where this one with, to me, pretty darn good conditions. Let's show you that again. So there you go. Clear sky. Actually, one of the first days in a while we've had clear skies. We had thunderstorms yesterday. Yeah, clear skies. And we are getting 300 watts. And see, here's the problem, right? 300 watts is great. It's fantastic. But what if you're using more than 300 watts? Then you're going to want a higher input. And that's, once again, where the 600 watt panel comes into play. So if I were you and I was debating between the 400 watt and the 600 watt, it wouldn't even be a question easily the 600 watt because look at this we're getting 300 watts we're getting a pretty damn good input right now and it's going to take a long time to recharge why does it say remaining discharge time why doesn't it just say the charge time and it doesn't even say the charge time right there it just says recharging that doesn't make any sense it just says recharging and doesn't even give me a time so yeah <laughs> all i can really do is just sit out here for a little while and see what difference we get with the sun but yeah, I'll do that. I'll kind of hang out for a little bit and see what we can get with ideal conditions here in the Midwest. So I just adjusted the panel a tiny bit. No real difference. Okay. I basically just stood the legs up a little bit straighter. So we'll let it, well, I mean, we're already at 13%, so that's not too bad. So here's the realistic number, right? This is a 1,000 watt hour unit. If you had 1,000 watts of solar, it would take one full hour in perfect conditions with 1,000 watts. This thing can only accept 650 watts. So Basically, unless you take two of the 400 watts and put them in series, then you're going to get closer to that 650 watt limit. Oh, I forgot this has that stupid, you can't change the time on this one. I forgot all about that. This is like my only unit where you can't change that time out time. Frustrating. All right, so it's been about 32 minutes. The sun is now hitting some severe clouds. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up and come inside. But we gained, you know, 18% charge in roughly 30 minutes. 
and I don't recall exactly how long the sun's been in the clouds. Look at that, literally as I'm talking, the, I can't even look at it, it's too bright, but yeah, there's the clouds. So anyways, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this video up and come inside, because yeah, those clouds are literally, look at this freaking sky, not a cloud to be seen, and then you go over here and yeah, they, it, I'll tell you what, look, look, look at this, look at this. There's no freaking cloud anywhere, except for ruining my video. <laughs> Before we wrap this video, here's the hooks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there is eight hooks. And now what we're gonna do is basically pack everything up. All right, so that was actually pretty simple. Can't complain, pretty quick and easy. I'll have a link to the solar panel in the description below. It'll be my Amazon affiliate link and you click it and I will earn a little bit of commission off of each purchase made using that link. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And honestly, I turn that money around and I buy stuff on Amazon that I can make videos on. So it's a win-win for everybody. I'll have a link to this unit in the description below as well. So far it's pretty good. I hate that every time this thing turns on, I don't immediately get Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I have to hold down this button every single time I turn it on every single time. I wish it just automatically came on with the unit. 1600 watts is pretty darn good. It can power a lot of things, but if it had say 1800 watts, then you'd be able to power like a hairdryer, for example. I tried to use a hairdryer in my car to get some sticky residue from my old dash cam and I couldn't use this power station. I had to use a different power station that had 1800 watt limit because it pulled like 1675 watts. And this does not have very much of a grace window at all. The moment you exceed that 1600 watts, it turns off. Make sure that whatever you're powering is 1600 or less. If you also take into account the fact that if you use this unit and then you try to recharge it after you've used it, it's going to throttle the charge to 500 watts. So most of my other power stations can handle their entire max input without any tr trouble at all and this thing has a little temperature icon and it limits the input now that's not the worst thing in the world because 500 watts isn't terrible and hey at the end of the day if it keeps your power station from doing anything bad then that's a win it's just frustrating that so many other power stations can you know support their entire max input without any trouble thank you so much for watching this is what would josh do and i'm out